What up folks, this is GK. If you're planning to learn DevOps and have some basic system admin experience, or you're already comfortable with Linux, here is the fastest way to learn DevOps. Now, instead of following a step-by-step -step approach and spending time on each tool individually, this is going to be a task-based approach. I'm gonna give you some user stories and an overall epic that you have to complete by end of the sprint. I'm calling it the epic way of learning DevOps. Imagine you got a job and you are given this task to complete and you'll also have, you know, internet and you'll also have Google so you can use all the resources and I'm sure you'll give your best shot to complete these tasks and stories because by completing these things, you're going to learn a lot of tools and integration of tools and what is required today to become a very good DevOps engineer. So let's dive into the story. All right, so the epic is create a GitOps pipeline on AWS. Now you can substitute AWS with the Azure or GCP, but this is an epic. So for those who are not aware of what is an epic, it's a large body of work and it's an agile term that is often used while creating user stories and tasks and subtasks. So what you should always start is with a bigger body of work and then you're going to split that into multiple user stories. Now what you are going to accomplish as part of this epic is this overview. So as a DevOps engineer, I want to create a GitOps pipeline on AWS to automate the deployment and management of infrastructure and applications using GitLab CI, Argo CD, Terraform and Prometheus. And if you haven't watched my previous video, I highly recommend watching that. And these tools are the most important tools to focus in the year 2024 and even next year, I believe. Rephrase. And even in next year, these tools are going to play a major role. So that's why I've created this epic that will help you to become a solid DevOps engineer by following this and completing all the tasks that I'm going to show you in this video. Now, again, if you do not want to use GitLab CI, you can always use GitHub Actions or Jenkins, but I highly recommend using GitLab CI as I'm seeing that a lot of companies and a lot of big enterprises are adopting GitLab CI. And then of course Argo CD because a lot of companies are using containers and for GitOps, Argo CD is the de facto tool. Terraform to create the infrastructure and Prometheus for monitoring. Now overall it is going to cover end-to-end -end DevOps work that you're gonna perform once you join a company. So with that, let's look at the first user story. Okay, so the first user story is set up Git repository. Now it is going to be a straightforward user story and uh, the size of the story is small. And the description here is as a DevOps engineer, I want to set up Git repository to store my infrastructure and application code. Now often what happens in the companies is whenever you join a company and you know, as a DevOps engineer, you perform a task, you're going to have your own project in a Git repository, which contains all the infrastructure related scripts, such as Terraform scripts, scripts or Helm charts, et cetera, et cetera. And that will be part of your repository. And here, since we have to deploy an application, you can also create another project or you can create sub directories as it is listed here. It's up to you, but the main thing here or the acceptance criteria for this is to create a GitLab or GitHub repository and then structure that into multiple repositories or multi structure, structure that into multiple directories or projects. Now infra is where you're going to store all the uh, stuff that you're going to perform in the next couple of user stories. And app is where you're going to have the application, sample application, you're going to have a sample application code. Okay, and then the Terraform configurations are added to the infra and Kubernetes manifest and Helm charts are added to the app directory. So this is simple, don't take more than one day uh, to this user story and just create a GitHub repository or GitLab repository. Since we're gonna use GitLab CI, try to create a GitLab repository. You can also get a free trial of GitLab to use end-to-end -end GitLab CI. So after you create the GitHub repository, this is where the fun is going to start. And this is extra large user story. 
I believe this is extra large, but again, if you have experience with Terraform, it might be a large or medium task. But since there are multiple things that you have to accomplish, so the story is configure Terraform for infrastructure as a code. As a DevOps engineer, I want to use Terraform to define and manage AWS resources. So the acceptance criteria here is Terraform is installed on the local machine or the CI runner. Now what I would highly recommend is install Terraform on your local laptop or PC. Okay. And then when you're going to execute things from GitLab CI perspective, you have to have Terraform installed also in the runner. Now, one way you can accomplish this is make your PC itself as a CI runner, or you can create a VM inside AWS and make that as a CI runner. The choice is yours, but uh, this task can be accomplished either by having just one runner inside your PC or in the cloud. The Terraform configurations for AWS resources are written in the infra directory. So as in when you write some Terraform configuration such as creating the backend in an S3 bucket or creating a backend anywhere you want for now in the local, you can put those configurations in the infra directory that you have created in the previous story. And another important thing is the rem remote backend for the Terraform state is configured. So like I was saying, you can configure that in the S3 bucket and the GitLab CA pipeline for Terraform is created and tested. Now here, uh, all you have to do for this task in the story is just create a dot, you know, GitLab CI file inside the infra project or inside the repository that you've created and then test few things, whether your Terraform is working or you can create a resource or create uh, or create a backend. So you can test all those things. So that's just starting with the CI pipeline. Now you might have this question like, you know, if I am not having any Terraform experience or if I do not know what to do with these backend terms or all these things, then how should I proceed with this? The simple thing that I would ask you is, let's say you as a DevOps engineer, you have joined a company, you know, somehow having basic experience and now you have to figure out by yourself to create or to work on this user story. So what would you do? I mean, obviously what you will do is by hook or crook, you will try to complete the story, either taking the help of your peers or going into Google or chat GPT, take any help that you have. My only suggestion is when I'm saying keywords such as Terraform or, you know, GitLab CI, do not go and sign up for a Terraform course and waste your eight hours of time. You can do that later, but for this video, the stories that I'm going to give, just complete them the way you want to do it. Like the main agenda for this stories or the main agenda for this epic is not to make you get certified in the Terraform or, you know, get you a PhD in Terraform or GitLab CI, but this is just to fast track your learning process. So it means that Terraform can be installed by just Googling and asking Google how to install Terraform or asking ChatGPT how to install Terraform and just install it on your local PC. Okay. Similarly, you ask ChatGPT how to configure, you know, um, how to configure the backend, do it. That's all you need to know. And while you're doing this, you might get into a lot of issues such as, you know, Terraform cannot be initiated or Terraform cannot be downloaded or installed, or you might get into a lot of issues and then you will start debugging. Okay, so you're going to learn as part of the job. So now let's go on to the third user story. This is also an extra large body of work. So the description is as a DevOps engineer, I want to set up EKS cluster to run my Kubernetes applications. Again, you can either use EKS or AKS or, you know, GKE. It doesn't matter. Use any cluster, create any cluster. And then the acceptance criteria for this is Terraform is used to create the EKS cluster. Now this can be a little challenging straight away. So my recommendation is that uh, first create the EKS cluster manually. Okay, first create it manual. And then the next step in this is configure cube controller or the CLI from your local computer 
that way you can talk to the AKS cluster. All right, and then work on the necessary IAM permissions that are required to connect. So once you are done with this, write any write a Terraform script to create an EKS cluster. So destroy that EKS, EKS cluster that you've created. Now you know what are the things that are needed for an EKS cluster to be created. That way, when you're writing a Terraform file, you would know what are the things that have been passed to the, to the Terraform. Again, you know, when you ask the same question to the Google, you're going to get a very good Terraform file. You can just use that to create, but you should be aware of what are the things that are that you are doing as part of that step. Okay, so yes, so we have we are done with this in the manual step and then necessary IAM permissions are needed. Again, if you are not aware of AWS, you can use Azure or GKE. Uh, but again, if you are not aware of all three clouds, then uh, just write another story of creating an account in one of the clouds, okay? And then come to this story. So don't take this story as one day work because this is extra large body of work. So it might take, let's say two sprints or three sprints. So if a sprint comprises of uh, two weeks or three weeks, you can take even 25 days of work or time for this to complete. Of course, if you are an experienced person, you're not, take, you're not gonna take that much of time. But if you are a new person or if you are trying to learn things, then take time and then get these things done. But again, just get the job done. Don't worry about how much knowledge you are gaining or how much you know, depth of knowledge you are going to get through this story. For instance, when I asked you to create an EKS cluster, just create an EKS cluster and things that are needed for the EKS cluster. You don't have to go and sign up for AWS DevOps certification yet. So the fourth user story is install and configure Argo CD. Now you're going to learn about a new tool, Argo. And this is for GitOps. So if you're not aware of what is GitOps, then just do a Google and understand what is GitOps. It's a very straightforward uh, philosophy or straightforward process of working, which means like you're going to have single source of truth as Git whenever you want to make some changes to your application. Instead of uh, directly deploying inside the infrastructure, you're going to use Git to make any changes. Okay, so as a DevOps engineer, I want to install and configure Argo CD to automate the deployment of my applications. Again, install Argo CD, very easy to install um, on the EKS cluster that you have created in the previous story. So that's the task number one. And then you're going to get a Argo CD UI and then configure the Argo CD with your GitLab repository. Okay, and then an Argo CD application is created to deploy applications from the GitHub Git repository. Again, this is also extra large body of work. So take time and uh, deploy Argo CD on the EKS cluster. So user story number five is deploy applications using Argo CD. As a DevOps engineer, I want to deploy applications using Argo CD to ensure continuous delivery. So the acceptance criteria for this is an, an Argo CD application resource is created and configured applications are deployed automatically when changes are pushed to the GitHub repository or GitLab repository. An automated deployment is verified by pushing changes to the repository. Now this is a, again a bigger, uh, this is a bigger body of work. So my recommendation is that take any sample applications that you will find in the internet with the Docker images and everything or with the Helm charts because we're not learning how to create Helm as part of this. So follow any YouTube tutorial on how to create basic Helm if you want to do it. If not, that is not mandatory, but take any sample applications that you EKS. So the final user story is set up monitoring and alerts with Prometheus. So Prometheus is a very famous monitoring tool. So as a DevOps engineer, I want to monitor my applications and application infrastructure using Prometheus. So Prometheus is installed on the EKS cluster. Prometheus is configured to scrape metrics from applications and the cluster. 
alerting rules are defined and configured in prometheus alerts are tested to ensure they work as expected now if you have completed five user stories and if you are tired don't worry about this user story but this is a very good user story on the monitoring so try to um, complete this if possible if not if you're already done five which means you have achieved a lot and i'm sure you're going to gain a lot of experience and you can confidently crack any interviews that would be asked on these major on these important tools the main assumption here is that you are solid in linux okay and if you are not aware of linux then follow any youtube channel or any tutorials that are teaching well on linux linux basics and linux system admin basics or you know installing and configuring shell scripts etc so um, because as in when you are trying to do things you might get into a lot of uh, issues and you have to be confident to debug whenever you run into issues Now don't try to boil the ocean by trying to complete this whole epic in maybe two weeks or three weeks. It is not possible. Give yourself some time and try to complete them, but make daily incremental progress on the tasks that are listed here. So I have created all these tasks and the link is in the description below. Click on the story, you're gonna see the description and everything that I've put here. So if you want to do it, you can also do it on your GitHub repository. Um, and uh, I hope this will make your DevOps learning much simpler instead of focusing on too many things. Just focus on these things. And if you disagree, let me know in the comment section or if you want to add anything else to these stories or any tasks that you want to add, again, comment in the below. Take it very seriously as if you want to lose the job if you do not do this. Okay, so with that, thanks again for watching this video. If you have any questions or comments, let me know in the comment section. If you haven't subscribed, subscribing to this channel would be awesome. Take care. Bye.